Hi, I'm Eric Jurgensen, a hobbyist blacksmith based in Oklahoma City. Welcome to my basement shop. Let's take a look at a coil I made to solve the problem of welds when you cannot run the entire work through the coil. For a while, I've been thinking about a coil that I think would make pretty good coupling, that is, be pretty efficient and pretty effective at heating, but still be open from the side. I've got a project that I've been working on that has gotten big enough, and I'll show you the forge weld at the end, that I can no longer do a forge weld uh, by pushing it through a coil. I've got enough ornamentation at each end of the project that it just wouldn't fit through a regular coil. So I've finally kind of broken down and I'm making this coil. It's going to turn out to be very effective. It's what one of my friends calls my taco coil because it looks a bit like a taco shell. This mandrel I'm using, you may have seen in some of my other videos, it's a bit of half inch black pipe that I have uh, put a groove in with quarter inch round stock as a, uh, a fuller. Um, and in, on one side, I've cut three quarters of the pipe away so that it can work in really tight spots. You can see that on the far end, not the end I'm using. Um, and that's pretty effective. The only thing I would change about this, and I'm going to change it, is I'm going to make these grooves deeper because they're not quite enough support. And the pipe isn't collapsing, but it's working not quite as well as it could to support the bends. We're going to speed this up a little bit. It's basically three re repetitions of this same sequence to get effectively a three loop coil. It's not as quick as a full coil, but it is much better than a pancake coil, which wouldn't achieve welding heat at all. And in practice, I save a precious few seconds getting to the anvil versus a full coil because I can pull it right out the side. I like this little pipe cutter because you can spin it in a small space. My large one is a more effective cutter, but doesn't fit. I've been making this out of quarter inch tubing because that's much cheaper for me to get. But I have eight millimeter stubs, which won't quite go around the quarter inch tubing. So I have purchased a tubing expander and this is the first time I'm actually using it because this is when I finally ran out of my six millimeter tubing. This works quite well, I'm really pleased with it. But one of these I stretched just a little bit too much. I forget it was the first or second one that I did, but uh, you'll see that when I go to solder that one, I won't show you the other one because that goes really cleanly. You'll see that I fumble with it. Um, and that's just kind of a warning not to overstretch. Um, if you do overstretch, you can actually put it in a bit of a V block, a really shallow V block and upset it back a little bit. Uh, or you can just cut it off and stretch it again. You probably want to cut both of them off so they're the same length. Um, then I flared the other end with just a standard flaring tool and I put the nuts over before I flared because they won't fit across the stretch. So make sure you get the, the compression nuts on before you flare. Putting a little uh, soldering paste on an acid-based flux. Um, this is the one that's not going to work well. You can see it's sloppy on there. I really shouldn't have... Uh, gone ahead and done this, but in a couple tries, I'm going to get this welded. 
When I'm doing soldering like this, I turn down the induction heater a bit um, so that I don't really overheat this. Um, if I were more practiced at this, I could probably do it a lot faster and at a higher setting. The copper does need um, a little bit higher setting than you'd think because it conducts heat away pretty quickly. Um, but with a little experimentation, you can get that dialed in. I may actually have enough solder on it already, but I don't trust my soldering, so I overdo it. And I'm going to pay for that here in a minute. I just left well enough alone there, it would have worked. But I moved it too much while the solder was still molten. So, now that it's too hot, I'll use a pair of tongs and redo the soldering. Let's skip that. All right, this is just a sample heat, a couple bits of uh, half inch round stock. Um, that's roughly what I'm going to be welding. I'm just showing you how quickly it comes up to heat. It's not as quick as a full coil, but a pancake coil won't get a heat like this. So I'm really pleased with how this works. And in practice, my ability to pull, well, that I can get it in at all for this project, see the leaves on this end. Well, there are leaves on the other end too, so it wouldn't go through a round coil. Precious second or so when I pull it out because I don't have to pull it out either end of a coil, which is what I did with the weld at the other end that put the leaves on the other end. Um, that cost me another second or so and really made it harder to set the weld. With this, I just put up the top. It's super quick. So I am really tickled to have this coil. Mostly wish I'd made it a year ago. Um, and I'm interested in exploring some of the other things I can do with it. I think it has some possibility even for working with, you know, like 14 or 16 gauge plate. Um, I think this would work really well for making uh, cooking trivets, things like that, where you need to make a big loop out of, uh, like, say, three quarter or one inch by quarter stock that has to be welded back to itself in a chain link style weld, because you can't put that through the coil, but you can put it in this taco. Thanks for watching. I'll show you more of this coil later. And as Jim Coke says, forge on and make beautiful things.